As someone that has recently survived a tornado, I can't tell you that it's not scary. It's every bit and more that you can imagine. This happened in Funston, Texas, on May 25th, 2023. We got a phone alert seconds before we got hit, so I got in the bathtub and my husband laid down beside it. It lasted for about six minutes, but it felt like an hour. The lights went out immediately, and it was the middle of the night, so we just had our phone lights to cope with total darkness. Then the pressure made the water inside the toilet bubble up, and not long after that, the shower head blew out. We had barely made it to the bathroom before all of the glass blew in. The roof to our house was then ripped off immediately, as well as the back of our house. We lived in a small farmhouse built in the 50s, and in the aftermath, engineers confirmed that our entire house had been picked up and slammed back down. What we were left with looked like a dollhouse that opens into two halves, but essentially with just the front left half standing. We were okay, aside from getting hit with a lot of glass, and me having one of my eardrums blown out. Our house had to be completely demolished, all of our cars were totaled, and we lost two beloved pets. I was a resident of Mayfield, Kentucky on December 10th, 2021, when the EF4 tornado hit. Me and my fiancé lived in the central part of town that was directly impacted. We took shelter in the bathroom of our apartment and knew what was happening when it started. I could feel the pressure from this thing all over my entire body. The ceiling was shaking up and down violently from the force. With wind and small specks of debris flying into the bathroom from everywhere and hitting us all over. Thankfully, it wasn't enough to hurt us. Water was also pouring in from the ceiling as well, filling the bathtub that we were in. All of this was as loud as hell. It sounded like an indistinguishably loud TV static roar. This continued for about 45 to 50 seconds until part of the ceiling began to fall in. Then it was over. By sheer luck and the way our apartment complex was designed, the bathroom and all four walls held strong protecting us from the worst. When we opened the bathroom door, to our horror, we discovered that we were just outside. Most of our apartment was destroyed. The one-floor apartments we lived in were part of a complex designed in a weird U-shape. The apartments on the other side from us were struck first, and I think they soaked up most of the damage, because they were completely destroyed while ours was only mostly destroyed. Meanwhile, we were left physically unharmed in the bathroom. I say physically unharmed, because it was most definitely a traumatic event. I think about and replay the events of that night in my head every day. I'm borderline obsessive with keeping up with the weather now because of it. I was certain we were going to die. If any of the circumstances had been just a little bit different, we definitely would have, or at the very least, been seriously hurt. The slightest bit of severe weather makes all of us anxious. Four months later, we have a new home. We are the lucky ones. A lot of people are still living in hotels, or with friends and family. It'll be about two years before all the damage and debris is cleaned up. I've been hit by one EF-0 and three EF-1 tornadoes before, but April 27th, 2011 was the day I witnessed the power of two EF-5 tornadoes. It was like the hand of God scraped across the Alabama-Mississippi state line. I'll never forget that day. From before daylight to after nightfall, Dixie's Tornado Alley was hit by round after round after round of storms. It was as if there was no end in sight. The feeling of worthlessness and helplessness was almost as crushing as the tornadoes themselves. 
April 27th remains one of many reasons why I no longer worship a god. Because someone so powerful, who causes or allows their creation to suffer so dearly, no matter how guilty or innocent they are, isn't something that I feel deserves my praise. It's also the reason why, if the wind changes direction too fast, I start having auditory hallucinations of tornado sirens and screams drowned out by unprecedented destruction. This is both frightening and strange, since there were no sirens in Phil Campbell that day, thanks to the first two waves of storms knocking out our power. The first tornado is a memory I can't seem to escape from, the EF-5 that went from Hackleburg to Phil Campbell, Alabama. I was at a friend's house since school was cancelled the day before, and no one took the weather seriously before that day. What was so surreal was how it went from clear sky to some sort of greenish twilight outside. Almost instantly, at a little past 3pm on the 27th, I remember that I heard a subtle, constant noise, like a train horn. That noise only goes away once it's muffled by a roar mixed in with rain or debris hitting everything around you. The swirling of the wind has such an eerie tone once you're in the debris field, almost like it's resonating, but the sounds of the debris hitting things around you keep startling you and keeps you from noticing it. Being inside that area is ungodly, to say the least. Imagine you have blenders full of ice directly over your ears, but the sound is muffled from your ears popping, so loud that you can't hear your own pleas for mercy, screaming as if somehow your voice could make it all go away. There's that moment when you're debating on whether or not to brace the door, or to embrace the person next to you, because it seems as if the entire building is moments away from disintegrating. The thought of one last moment of comfort from a complete stranger seems to help you accept death. Then, the noise becomes a distant rumble, disappearing in the background, as the tornado continued its death march towards Tennessee, punctuated by sounds of people shouting, Are you okay? As everyone's adrenaline started to wear off, and survivors called out for their loved ones. It still feels like a bad dream. I, I came to after being knocked basically unconscious from a piece of debris after the roof was ripped off from the building that I was in. I was slipping in and out of what alternated between a white light and ringing noises, or pitch black and a humming noise. Then there were the screams from pain, or loss of loved ones, the loss of entire livelihoods, or all three. One of the most heartbreaking moments I remember was seeing a grown man crying to the point of vomiting over not being able to save a complete stranger's kid. I was a 14-year-old boy and somehow remained calm, due to the shell shock of it, I'm guessing, and helped communities I wasn't even a part of for three days, helping find a few of the dozens that died from that tornado alone. Most of the dead that we found looked like pincushions before they had sheets laid over them and were taken away. Some of them didn't even look like that. At one point, I was reaching down to grab a hand sticking out of some rubble, hoping to find a living, breathing person attached to it, only to pull it loose, then staring at it for a moment to try and process what I was witnessing. Meanwhile, I was unaware if my own family was alive or not, 35 miles north of where I was. Moments like those are the reasons why I'm so weather aware, and have bug out bags packed, not in preparation for the end of the world, but in preparation to prevent the end of mine. Barely an hour after we left to go get chainsaws, pry bars, and first aid to help do search and rescue, we viewed the second tornado the EF-5 that hit Smithville, Mississippi, from a distance. It missed us by a mile or two, but we were on elevated ground close to Hodges, Alabama, and could see its destruction take place from where we were. The only positive things that are left behind by a tornado, especially one of this magnitude, are the selfless acts of the members of your community, 
and those surrounding communities as well. It's like for a moment we all forget about race, or beliefs, or differences as a whole, and we become family once again. We found a mother and her infant son. The mother was covered head to toe in blood, screaming for someone to save her baby. The baby didn't have a scratch on him. But she had countless cuts and gashes all over her body while she protected her child. Talk about a mother's love. I recently saw both of them at a Walmart in Russellville, just 15 minutes north of Phil Campbell, three or so years ago. It blew my mind seeing the kid, a tornado survivor as an infant, now living a normal life at 10 or 11 years old. April 27, 2011, changed how an entire nation viewed weather, if not the world, and led to the better funding and research of storms that we see today. But you know what they say, safety protocols and procedures are written in blood. The tornado at Phil Campbell, Alabama killed 72 people, making it the deadliest tornado in Alabama history. At the time, it was the deadliest tornado to strike the United States since 1955. 